Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be introducing a new product from the Cali Linux folks. This is called Cali Purple. It's not just for red and it's not just for the blue. Their first entry into offering a, a cybersecurity defensive platform. And let's talk about it a little bit. This is not a review. It's an early look uh, at a release product and just to let you know what it does and how it works. So what is Cali Purple? It's called Cali Purple. And so what is it? It's uh, obviously it's defensive security, but it's based on the NIST cybersecurity framework. And the current framework that the NIST is under is version 1.1. They are actively working on 2.0, but they're still in draft on that. And so, yeah, they're still getting comments back from uh, some of their approaches. The, they're not planning on finalizing that until sometime in 2024. This one, however, uh, Cali Purple, was released two days ago, March the 13th of 2023. And again... Like all Cali products, it is an open source product. So it is based, as I said, on the NIST cybersecurity framework. But what is that? Well, they cover, the NIST covers uh, things like identity, protect, detect, respond, and then recover. So those would be the steps that you would take. You identify what critical processes and assets you have. You identify and document your information flows. You look at, you take a hardware and software inventory for every machine. Uh, you establish policies. How do you want to secure? What do you want to secure? And then you assess threats, vulnerabilities, and risks that your organization faces. The next step is protect. And that is to manage access to the assets and the information that you have in your systems. It's also meant to protect sensitive data. So you need to determine what that is. You also need to conduct regular backups, obviously, because if you do have to roll back for some reason, you need to have a secure backup that you can, you can rely on. Uh, also, you want to protect your devices. You want to manage your device vulnerability because there will be a list of different devices. They're all going to have different susceptibilities depending on what packages are installed, what operating systems you're using, and, and believe it or not, the age of the hardware as well. Also, then you need to train your users because sometimes they're the weakest link in a defensive chain. So most of the time, actually. The next is how do you detect uh, the presence of a threat? Well, you need to test and update your detection processes and make sure they're working. You need to maintain and monitor logs. Yeah, that's boring, but you need to do it or you need to have something doing it for you. You need to have, know what expected data flows that you would see uh, in a given day. Maybe you have uh, particular processes that occur on monthly cycles or weekly cycles or daily cycles. Whatever those might be, you need to document those so that you know that if you see something that is out of, out of whack, it's not occurring you know, at the time that you would expect, then you could have someone tripping the wire, right? You need to in understand the impact. What would happen if your cybersecurity system failed you and, uh, and allowed a breach to get in? What's the impact that that would have to your business? And then finally, you need to be able to detect events themselves, right? Once, once you have that plan, you need to respond to that threat, whatever it is. You need to ensure that your response plans are tested, then ensure that your response plans are maintained. So yeah, um, coordinate with your internal and external uh, stakeholders as well, because you need to keep them informed on what you're doing. If you have to, I mean, have a plan for recovery, but you need to communicate with your internal and external stakeholders again to indicate, hey, I'm recovering these systems, or this is my plan for recovery, have we missed anything? Also ensure that the recovery plans that you have in place are maintained because things do change. You need to manage public relations and your company reputation. So many times, and we've seen this in the past, I don't know, 12, 15, 20 years, where companies have not responded very well to uh, breaches in their uh, their security perimeters, 
had data exfiltrated, and then deny it. I mean, that's the worst thing. And that has had a negative impact on those on those companies' reputation. So basically, be truthful, be honest, uh, let people know that it's happened. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it's something you need to fix. What is Cali Purple? What is it really meant for? So it has over 100 plus defensive tools at, at present. It's growing. Uh, it is, uh, they also supply a reference architecture for what they call a sock in a box. And then there's this autopilot scripting feature, which allows for the, the Kali systems uh, to be able to attack certain parts of your infrastructure to see how it responds and what kinds of things you can learn from that. So the reference architecture, I know this is an eye chart. I'll blow that up for you. And then you can you can see just what it looks like. Uh, it actually has uh, it, on the internal side of, of the of the land there are actually five different elements. So at at the uh, very outside there's a small box above. That's that's the vulnerable system that's sitting on your DMZ. Some of the tools that you have once you've gotten this set up and you're collecting your events, you have sensors that are capturing information and logs that are being sent up. Maybe you're taking periodic packet filters and looking at those as well, uh, packet traces, to see uh, what kind of a data you have, particularly if you have anomalies. So you have reports like uh, the, the elastic seam, which is here shown it as a dashboard. You also have Archimy, and Archimy is a packet capture tool, and that also gives you the ability to search the packet, the raw data, and then, again, it's open source. And also, there's Malcolm. Malcolm is a network traffic analysis tool. And you'll get something like this where you start receiving raw data and it starts to get processed. Malcolm is going to analyze it and look at it to see if their traffic is fitting a normal pattern, right? Then there's Green uh, Greenbone Vulnerability Management System, over 100,000 vulnerability tests that it can perform. This is trying to determine, okay, so I have a vulnerability event, what's the severity of it? Because that's the next thing you need to know is, I mean, at some level, I'm gonna get false positives, I might have something that's minor, uh, and then you're going to have something that is completely uh, out of uh, out of unexpected that you might consider a severe threat. So, and that gives you it can provide you daily updates with what's going on with your systems. And it looks, I mean, this like I said, this is kind of my first look at it. And looking at some of the configuration uh, documents for this, by the way, uh, Cali Purple has its own wiki. They don't expect a lot out there yet. I mean, they're they're still. It's a. It is in. It is in progress. It's pretty early on into this. Uh, I mean, this is the first drop of it that they've had for us to start looking at and 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 kicking around. So I don't look for this to be a production ready system or finally highly polished just yet. So, but I did notice that a lot of the examples in Cali Purple at this point in time uses OpenSense. And so I was like, well, why don't they have PFSense? I saw some mention of PFSense, and I'm not saying that you can't look at the OpenSense and go, oh, well, that's, that's doing this and this on PFSense. I'm just not quite sure what's going on. So I don't know. I, it's too early to really make comments like that just yet. So this is for the blue and purple teams in your organization. Uh, but, you know, you can set it all up on one machine. What I found kind of interesting about the install, so one of the things you can do with this, as you can see here, during the installation of Cali Purple, you'll notice that the Install Defensive Tools by Purpose has... Uh, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. The same elements that are in the NIST uh, cybersecurity framework. So I suppose what you could, that means is that I can put, I can create servers or different VMs 
One for identify, one for protect. Maybe combine the identify and protect together. It gives you the flexibility to do all that. Or I guess if you're learning it all, you can pile it all onto one. Like what I'm going to do here. Obviously, uh, Kali is uh, Kali Linux itself is based on Debian. Kali Purple is too. They were talking uh, that today there was going to be some big announcement at, at 12 UTC. Well, <laughs> we're way past that at the time that I'm doing this video. Still nothing, so I'm, I'll keep my eye on it. If something drops, I'll, I'll drop a note in the, in, in the top and I'll pin it so that you'll see it. So the first time up with Kali Purple, I keep wanting to say Kali Linux. Uh, the first thing up with Kali Purple is... You'll notice that it has a new theme, it has a new background screen, so but and everything has changed, even the menus. Similar to Kali Linux in the way that they're formed, but they don't have the same tools in them. As you'll notice that it's arranged by identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. So it is following those along. There are other packages you can install into this, and there's some suggestions. Uh, Kali Purple Wiki that will talk about some of that. And then I'm not going to jump into this today. This isn't a demo. I'm just trying to show you that this is quite different from Kali Linux. So, I mean, I think this is a it's an interesting start. It's a, it's, they have a lot of tools already in place. You know, at some point I'll come back and we'll, we'll do the install. We'll take a look at it. But I just don't feel comfortable, you know, showing you showing the system off and not understanding everything that it's doing. So I don't want to do that just yet. So just consider this an announcement. It's available for download. It's available as an x86 ISO. It, you can download it as a virtual machine. You can download it as a Docker image. Uh, as a matter of fact, multiple Docker images. There's also ARM-based uh, machines based on this that you can use. Raspberry Pi is one of them, of course. And uh, yeah, um, there's lots of ways to get started with this. But yeah, I'll come back and uh, after I've had a chance to learn more about it and maybe stand up some events and monitors and then I can show you what I learned. But uh, yeah, so this is just an early look. Hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon, and bye for now.